And I've talked to other people about this, that, that um, there's pretty good evidence that animals move to mineral deposits, that animals seek out salt, um, that animals consistently go to salt licks, and that humans could have easily followed animal trails to salt licks and mineral licks. When I was on the Pacific Crest Trail, um, the animals were rabid for the salt from our sweat. We would pee on the ground and there would be deer that would come straight out of the woods to lick the pee off the ground because they were sure. so eager. They were so in need of the sodium. I mean, I think that, I don't I, think, I think any of us the is... same. I think we're on the same page here. We have five basic flavors or that we sure. perceive. Salty, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. Okay. okay. And so all of those have survival values. So our nerve, built into our nervous system through evolution is a, a predilection for these foods or avoidance of these foods. So the bitter foods we avoid, the sweet and salty foods we seek out as we do the umami flavored foods. Um, so there, there's no doubt, salt is very rare in a terrestrial environment. Tell me where you're gonna find salt in a terrestrial environment. It just, it doesn't exist. And that's why the potassium to sodium ratio in a thousand foods here is is you always get more potassium than you do sodium. Well, go to your, you go to your question about craving. I think this is something that's misinterpreted. Remember, we evolved in a in scarcity. So when we crave something, we don't crave it because it's in abundance and we eat it every day. We crave it because it's actually quite rare, and we evolved to if we if we encounter it to make sure we eat it because we might not encounter it again. And they've shown that our, our desire for salt is, is one of our strongest desires, which is an indicator that it's actually rarer to find it. I don't know that I'd agree with that. I would say that's probably an indication that it's a critical nutrient in human physiology. It is a critical nutrient, so you have a craving well, for it. Wait a minute, well, let's talk about human it. physiology. You're familiar with the sodium potassium ATPase pump, right? Sure. So there's four, there's four major or six major ions that oh, we as all uh, vertebrates have to deal with calcium and magnesium, sodium and potassium, and hydrogen ions, either acid or base. So those are the, ma the six major ions that our body has to regulate. And so those ion ions have been regulated from the very beginnings of life on earth, 2.6, 2.7 billion years ago. Those cellular mechanisms in the membrane were already in place. So I guess the question comes up is, if you look at those mechanisms, why does the sodium potassium ATPase pump blow out sodium and take in potassium? Similarly, uh, if you look at the calcium to magnesium ratio, it takes in magnesium and blows out calcium. So uh, the typical cell, uh, whether it's a human, a reptile, a fish, or whatever, contains very tightly regulated uh, amounts of these six ions. And so when you look at the hydrogen ion concentration, acid base, it tends to have more base than acid. And when those ions get out of whack, as they do in cancer and heart disease, then we have a lot of problems. And one of the ways in which they get out of whack is by a high salt diet, what would be considered a moderate salt diet in, in the typical Western diet. And what that does is sodium impairs that sodium to potassium ATPase pump. And over the course of decades and a lifetime, it allows more sodium intracellularly and less potassium. So this information is just relatively recently known because of the way in which you have to measure intracellular sodium. You have to develop specific NMR probes to do it without going in and screwing up what those ratios are. And uh, this is Titze's work, T-I-T-Z-E. And uh, it's just, it's fascinating. And um, we'll send you some papers to look at this. Yeah, I'm not, sure I, I'm not sure I agree with all that. So in those papers oh, that you, okay. were, you were showing, Trevor, <laughs> Um, the, you were talking about the potassium, and I think that there's this, uh, I'm not aware, I think that there, um, I've never seen any good evidence that there's an absolute 
requirement for a certain sodium to potassium ratio. I think that there's probably a, a need for potassium in the human diet. I think most of would agree there's a need for potassium in the human diet, but I don't think that the ratio, I think the ratio has been widely misinterpreted uh, by many people. And as you point out in those papers, um, I think that a lot of what gets skewed in these people is that when they are doing lower salt diets, they are probably potassium deficient. So in that study that I showed, looking at the many uh, low salt versus uh, higher salt diet studies, what we don't know, uh, unfortunately, without looking at individual studies, is any individual subject's insulin resistance, um, how much of that sodium they're holding onto, and what their baseline potassium level is. Uh, my premise is and that- actually that review you showed us pointed out the exact of that fact that there's an issue in all those studies that they weren't looking at salt sensitivity in individuals. They weren't looking at whether they were already, uh, uh, they had high blood pressure, whether they were insulin resistant already. And they said that actually there was very con low control in all these studies. It's challenging, but I, I think that um, I am not convinced that in the, in the setting of adequate potassium, which I think a meat-based diet would provide because meat is so rich in potassium, that higher amounts of salt are in any way, shape or form detrimental to the human body. I mean, we can manage it, we can exclude it. I would love to see some of this research suggesting that higher sodium breaks the sodium potassium ATPase. I've never seen that. Um, I think it's pretty clear that if we go too low on sodium, we are going to develop insulin resistance. Now, where we draw that line is questionable. Um, I've seen well, it. So, I mean, I just, I've not seen the, I've sent you a lot of studies showing that high salt diets are associated with insulin resistance. The only studies that I have found are the ones you just pointed out uh, show, uh, that, that make you're any sort of me, claim about you low me, sodium. You sent me and those are all one week. Those are all one week studies. You said, did you send me epidemiology studies that no, high sodium? These are these are the ones I, the ones I just showed you. Those are in are, rice. Are, those are in mice. <laughs> no, one well, was about, human. How about the human studies? How do you explain the the Yanomamo people? Five hundred people were studied for blood pressure over the course of a lifetime, cross sectionally and blood pressure doesn't rise. So how do they, how do they become insulin resistance if, if low salt on a no salt culture causes low blood pressure over the course of a lifetime in 500 people? How many, how much salt were they getting per day? Um, I think it was around a, less than 100 grams. 100 milligrams? Uh, right. 100, yeah, 100 milligrams, yeah. That, that's... That to me is, I'd have to see the study. That to me is okay, a little Trevor, bit Trevor, pull it up and, and send it to him. No, it's not far-fetched. 100 milligrams of sodium is, is essentially, that's, that's a, like a they lot were, of physical. I don't have that one available. I'm looking right no. at that review. They said, you want a human study? It says right no, on the I, last page, this Korean study is one of the only long-term properly controlled studies with 120 subjects. And it shows that well, low sodium diet improves insulin resistance. But, but can you in, in people who that? are potassium deficient, please in people who are me. in people who are insulin resistant no, at baseline. Which, which one am I looking okay, for? Okay, it's the, I sent you that one on the, the email this morning. Oh yeah, let me pull that up. Yeah, pull that one up. And we're in the sodium it. weeds. We're in the sodium weeds. We're we're We've battling about sodium. I, I think what we have to do here is is get to the point of us. We, we've kind of reached that point of disagreement. We need to sort of yeah. summarize the disagreement and come back with maybe some, yeah. maybe we do a written blog together. Yeah. That okay. kind of point, you know? Mark, um, do you have blood work? Do you know your fasting insulin level? This one right there. Which, um, one? I haven't done it in a while. Oh, that's the wrong no. the, What do you do? You, what was blood? it? Yeah, in the yeah, past? yeah, that's the one. So um, I'm pulling up the. You guys there? Yep. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah. So here's the paper. You want me to share this? Sure. Getting good at Zoom here. This is my my first. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize about the video. That was a, a last minute thing. But uh, yeah, here's here's the uh, here's the paper. Okay. Yeah, so, so ten ten milli equivalents of sodium. Tell me that's not low. <laughs> what is that uh that's in their diet yes i'd have to do the comp i'd have to do the equation what is 10 milli equivalents of sodium how many milligrams a day is that they uh, placed for brief periods on 10 milli equivalents of sodium diets brief well, periods just read, read, read the paper okay uh, well, i can't read it right okay, okay. okay. Right well now. well how about if we go down to the tables that show 
it shows aldosterone, it shows, okay, there's the measure. blood pressure. Yeah, and there's the blood pressure. This is 506 people. Right, okay. I guess we're, okay, we're, so they, we're so equating in other words, that, did they measure know, fasting insulin? Um, yes, but in another paper. What was their fasting insulin on? on I don't have that on the top of my head, but we'll send you the second paper. Okay. Well, said these here. Look, I, I think Mark had the good point. That, yeah. You know, we, we have so far, you know, first 70 minutes here, we're, we're all on the same page here. And I think the other thing we're on the page is watching a ridiculous movie like Game Changers, where they take somebody who's on a uh, nothing but fast food diet, have them eat something crazy, and then show them his blood is hazy and say, look how bad a, a meat-based diet is for you. I, I think, you know, we, we, we do have to step back here and go, you know, we're getting into the weeds here, but there's a whole lot of places that we're in a 